Hello everyone, welcome back to ASR. This is our review of Senzo, Murder of a Soccer Star Part 2. Let's get into it. The second part of the Netflix documentary starts with various testimonies of the conspiracies and controversies surrounding Kelly and her various relationships in the past. Marawa gives commentary on the last time he saw Senzo and Kelly together and the song she performed that night prophesizing the tragic events that would follow. Again, I have to say big up to Netflix for uncovering some of these files. I don't know who Kelly was telling her story to at Joe Burke's Lyrical Theatre in 2017, but it has to be the most candidly she's ever retold the events of that night and even confirmed that her son witnessed everything. The documentary then shifts attention to the feud between Kelly and the Meiwas following Senzo's death. We get a better picture of where Kelly and Senzo were in their relationship before he died as it appears they were shacking up together at Kelly's house. This means that when Senzo died a lot of his things were left in her possession and Senzo's father fought to have them returned to the family. Kelly was definitely wrong to hold on to his belongings against his family's wishes and for allegedly not calling his parents to notify them that their son had died in her house. The documentary then shifts gears to explaining how the couple had met and how Senzo pursued her even though he already had a wife. Kelly claims that she only found out about the marriage after her pregnancy had been confirmed. Kelly also claims that Senzo had left his wife and moved in with her which I guess made her feel that the possessions they had together when he died were now hers. The audacity. Senzo's friends though confirmed that Senzo was still appeasing his wife Mandisa the entire time he was dating Kelly. As they retell the events of the day leading up to Senzo's death, they claim that Senzo was supposed to meet up with his wife Mandisa at a party that night. So I believe the plan was to chill with Kelly and her family then go and join Mandisa and her friends later. Dumelo pretty much confirmed that Mandisa had been trying to call them and they overstayed at Kelly's house. At this point, He's pissing me off, especially when he says they couldn't leave the house and he can't tell us why. Ultimately, Senzo's friends and family would arrive at the hospital to the realization that he had met his end. The second part of the documentary ends with the retelling of Senzo's funeral and the finger pointing that would follow. The biographers being interviewed cast a shadow of doubt over Mandisa, Senzo's wife who they loosely named as a suspect. Now while I believe Mandisa had plenty of motive and her demeanor at the press conference with Ivan Koza was weird, I doubt she had the means or desire to pull it off, cause Senzo was worth more to her alive than dead.